Yo guys, have you ever wanted to bring your dirt bike around but you didn't have a truck? Well this video is for you. I'm going to give you guys the rundown of how I tow my big 450 behind my Subaru. This will literally work on any car you can put a hitch on. I'm gonna give you guys the full rundown of how I do it. I've gone all the way from Florida to California with this setup. So let's get into it. So as y'all see, we got the freaking Subaru and the big 450. And you can literally, I ran a DRZ on this and the DRZ weighs around 300 pounds and the big 450 is around two, 230 or so. But let me show you guys the hitch setup we got going on. So coming to the hitch setup, as you can see, I just got a regular U-Haul hitch and I have this little adapter which makes it from a one and one fourth to a two inch because the hitch inlet is a two inch so you have to get this adapter or it won't really fit. They have adapters that go straight out but that sort of makes it worse because you'll be lower to the ground. And as y'all can see right here, this thing is pretty low to the ground but I've been rocking it for over five years. So over that time, it's sort of bent down. It's time for a new carrier, I know. I need to get a new one soon. So I got this hitch adapter from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description down below and pop a little picture up so you can see. I think it was around like 40 to $50. And when I first ran it, I was sketched, bro. I thought, yo, I don't know if it could hold the bike. Like, I don't know if this is strong enough, this metal. But let me tell you, it works, bro. For five years of having this, it has bent down, don't get me wrong, but this adapter piece hasn't really bent at all. It's pretty much the carrier that has bent down. So this piece right here is pretty damn strong and I put my full trust in it. Like I've hit some crazy bumps and when I drive with this hitch carrier, I don't drive slow. <laughs> so a reason I got a carrier like this and not a trailer is because I like to go fast, you know, and I sort of be, you know, swerving through some traffic sometimes, you know, when there's a slow driver, I'm like, whoop, I'm passing them. And I don't got to worry about the trailer swerving around some certain interstate, you're not allowed to have a trailer. And also for parking. Parking is the biggest thing when I was traveling. I hated, I didn't want to have to find certain parking spots that would have to fit my car. I wanted to be able to park in a normal spot and not have to deal with anything, not have to block anyone off or block like two two parking spaces off. I just wanted to be able to park where a normal car would park. And this setup is perfect for that. But coming back to the hitch, there's a few little mods I did to make it where it don't shake as much. And it is these little lock systems right here. I got this one from Amazon and this is uh, just like a stabilizer that helps it from moving back and forth and up and down. And then this one came with my carrier I bought the carrier from like Craigslist a while ago and the carrier came with this already like stabilizer on it so I'm not sure exactly where you can get this one but I'm pretty sure you could just put the one I have on the bottom on this top too and it would do the same thing but I've always just kept the stock one that the carrier came with well at least my carrier came with that I'm not sure if all of them do but it does wonders but don't get me wrong this thing is still going to be wobbling around as you can see but like it's not going nowhere bro i don't even have these too tight right now like i'll tighten it up a little bit for y'all so i tighten it up a bit as you can see and it's always going to be wobbling it's always going to be wobbling even the back and forth it's gotten worse over the years because i'm pretty sure my stabilizers are a little worn out if i get some new ones i'm pretty sure it would stiffen it up a little bit but even so, like, the wobble isn't really that bad while you're driving. Like I was saying earlier, like, I be swerving with this thing through traffic sometimes when I'm, you know, when I'm in that mode, just like, I want to get to where I want to get really fast, and there's some slow drivers. I be swerving this thing, and I've never had a problem with the bike falling off except once. And luckily, <laughs> I had a strap over the seat. So I usually run a strap over the seat from this point across to that point down there just for an extra stabilization. With the dirt bike, I would suggest having three straps, two on the bars on each, well, one on the bar on each side, 
and then one over the seat and you can sort of see the mark it makes which it will sort of make a mark on your seat but that's just always how i ran it and over the years of having this set up i've seen it on so many different cars i'm not sure if i inspired them or not some i know that i have because they freaking hit me up about my setup asking like yo how'd you do it like what what hitch hauler did you get what blah 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 so i've seen this setup on like honda civics subarus as you can tell and of course like the normal vehicles like jeeps i know zach goes had a jeep and he did the setup like this too which is more normal i feel like you used to see these setups on jeeps and trucks sometimes trucks even though i'm like you got a bed why would you need it but it's just cool to have it on your car like especially the subaru man like you can still rip around and you could carry your bike on the back it's just like it's the best of both worlds the main downside of sort of having this setup is definitely going to affect your rear springs. It's going to make them sag a little bit. As you can see, I got the bike on right now and we still got some room. Don't get me wrong. When I had my DRZ, it definitely was like I would almost be rubbing on the tire because I do have 10 and 10 and a half inch wide wheels. So that wasn't the best, but it did always work. And over like the five years of running this setup, I've seen the springs definitely get worn down a little bit where like the back is hanging down a little when I don't even have the bike on there, but it's barely noticeable. When you take the bike off, you can barely tell the difference of that weight of the bike being on that springs for so long, like you can't even tell. But I mean, overall, this setup is just amazing. It's literally transformed my life being able to travel with my favorite car with my favorite bikes right behind it and not really have to worry about anything. Because I remember when I first got my bike and I was like, dude, I wanna travel. I wanna travel so damn bad, but it's like, I don't have a truck. All I had was my car and I was like, how can I do it? And when this setup worked, like literally I tested it out for like two nights. I just left the bike on the back of the car overnight just to see if it would snap or anything like that with the DRZ and it worked perfect and I was like, all right, my first trip, I'm going from Orlando to Tallahassee. It was a four hour drive with the heavy DRZ, first time traveling, and I was definitely sketched out. Like the first time you have this set up before you get trust in it, you're gonna get a little sketched out. Don't get me wrong. It's gonna be wobbling a little. It might scrape on some things, some indents in the road, but just trust me. If you tighten the straps up correctly and they're tight, you don't have nothing to worry about. That, that thing is staying on there and it's going to get you to your destination and you're going to be able to rip in your car and also on the bike while you get there so it's flipping dope so i wanted to show the setup without the bike on it just so you can get a clear picture of what's going on so as you can see we got the carrier right here the adapter from two inch to one fourth because on the cars the hitches are usually one fourth which i don't know why but that's how they come as you see i got the u-haul hitch and yeah, got the stabilizer down here, stabilizer right here. And you're literally ready to tow, bro. Like, right now I'm just standing on it. No biggie at all. And one other thing I've seen people do who've had this setup is they'll literally cut this to make it come in a little bit. So it's not hanging as far back, which is pretty cool but then it makes it closer to your trunk which is a reason I've never done it but I heard it does help stabilize the bar a little bit more and just bring everything a little closer but like I said I've never done that I've only seen other people do it like I have a homie who put this on like a Mustang and he cut it in a little bit because his was hanging back a little, a little too far and it worked fine, so you can do this setup literally on any car, Subi, Civic, Mustang, any car, pause, <laughs> any car you can put a hitch on, I'm literally telling, you can put this setup on and it's going to work and you're going to be able to bring your bike everywhere. So gang, this is the video you might have been waiting for if you want to do this setup on your car. I know a lot of people have been asking me on the DMs like, yo, how does this setup work? And I always try to respond because like, I had no information when I first started this and it's just helpful for the upcoming people. Like if they wanna have a setup like this on how to do it. So hopefully this video taught you something 
and I want to see you guys ripping your freaking cars with your dirt bike on the back. Send me some freaking pictures on Instagram or anything like that. But yeah, hopefully this helped you out. I freaking love you. Stay motivated. Stay disciplined. Till next time. Peace.